Hi everyone, this is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. To be honest, I was done for the day. But then I stumbled upon this project, Browser Use, and I thought that this could it wait for tomorrow for the video. So here I am. In this video, I am going to show you how to get this thing installed locally and then we will play around with it a little bit. I am planning to do two videos on it. One would be the vanilla browser use video with local installation and with API based models, which is OpenAI of course. And then in the second one, I am going to show you how it works with Olama based models. Now, what exactly this tool is? This tool primarily enables you to integrate your websites with your AI agents. In the last couple of months, we have done heaps of videos around various AI agent frameworks, agentic uh, powered applications, and a lot of hype is floating around. People are saying that 2025 is going to be the year of agents and all that stuff. Now, to be honest, if you have implemented AI agents in production environment, then you know the pain especially when it comes to accessing the websites. It could be unstructured data, it could be structured data, it could be a lot of things which could really make it pain in the back in order to run these AI agents with your websites. And that is where this project is trying to help out. So in simple words, this is a powerful open source library that enables you to create AI agents that naturally interact with websites through text prompt. It tries to automate complex web tasks from navigation to form filling, making browser automation seamless. It is not perfect, by the way, because if you go to social media at the moment, again, a lot of people, the same, uh, you know, sort of thing around hype and this could be the next big thing. It is really good, but still it is full of bugs at the moment. And to be fair to the project, it's very new. Just, I think, a couple of weeks ago it was released and then a lot of iterations are being done. So we are working on Bleeding Edge. So quite a good project, no doubt about that, but not a, you know, silver bullet for everything. So that out of the way, let's try to get it installed and then see how it works. Before that, let me give a huge shout out to our very good friends at Mast Compute who are sponsoring the VM and GPU for this video. If you're looking to rent a GPU on a very affordable prices, I will drop the link to their website in video's description. Plus, I'm also going to give you a coupon code of 50% discount on range of GPU. So do check them out. This is the terminal Ubuntu and this is my GPU card NVIDIA RTX A6000 courtesy masked compute. First up, let's create a virtual environment with Conda quickly. You can go with Python virtual environment or poetry or whatever you want. Next up, I am going to install Playwright. Playwright is a web automation library and it's optional, but I would highly recommend you to install it, especially if you are dealing with web op automation with AI agents, it makes life so much easier. So it is going to take a minute or so. So let's wait to for Playwright to get installed. And it is installing some of the headless browsers in Chrome and all that stuff. So I believe everything looks good. There is a validation warning, which you can, uh, you can also install these dependencies if you like. So let me install them. So I'm just going to run this command in order to not this one. My copy paste is just struggling. So I'll just type it quickly. Okay, so because so the reason why it is giving me this error is that because playwright is in not in the path. So let me put it in the path now. And so I have gone the easy way I just did with apt get install lib event. So that should do it. Okay, that's all good now. After playwright is done, let me clear the screen. And of course, if you want to verify if playwright is there or not, just do playwright dash dash version and you can see it is there next up we need to install browser use itself and because we will be using openai and i'm just going to go with langchain dash openai in order to run it let's wait for it and that is done let me clear the screen and now we are ready to see it in action for that let me um, open it in the vs code and just create a new directory 
open it in the VS Code or whatever editor you use. Let me, it's the first time I'm using this virtual machine, so bear with me. Let me make the font bit bigger. So in this new directory, just create two files. One would be .env. Here you would need to set your OpenAI's API key. And if you don't have it, just go to platform.openai.com and grab your OpenAI's API key. That's a paid option, of course. And then this is a second file where all you need to do is to run this. So first up, we are importing the modules which we have just installed. And then we are instantiating our agent with this task that go to any website, but I'm asking you to go to Reddit, search for browser use in the search bar, click on the first po uh, post and then do something, return the first command. This is the model we are using. It is running asynchronously and then it is giving us the response back. So let me set my this .env and then I will run this code for you in the terminal. So I'm just going to run this code from here. So it is going to open the browser. Let's wait for it. Takes a bit of a time. You can also keep an eye on here, but you see it is going to Reddit now. There you go, it is checking it out. How good is that? And then it is going to search for browser use. Let's wait for it. And by the way, I think it is using Playwright behind the scene. That is cool. You see, it is typing browser use. How good is that? Very nice. So let it run, let it run. You see, now it is checking the browser use. And then there are a few Reddit pages are there. And then this is something. And now it is going to check out the first command and I'm letting it run in real time without editing or anything. So there is some command there. It is going to return that command. There you go, task completed and the command has been returned in a JSON format, which you can use programmatically. And if you have ever tried this with other frameworks, you know the pain, but this is really, really good stuff. So. And remember, it was just a text prompt. And yes, we also have to give the fair share to our OpenAI's model because they uh, have also performed very well there. So, but we will check with Olama based models during the next video to see how they perform. So really good stuff. Uh, let me try one more example here. Let's go back to our VS Code. Now in this task, I'm asking you to go to FahadMirza.com and return uh, I'll say return title of first blog post from homepage. So let me save this. It's not, yeah, it is now saved. My key is already set. Let's go here. Let me clear the screen and let me quickly show you that website. So this is my very, very old blog. I think 15 years old blog. So this should go to this and then select this one. So I'm just going to close it. I'll just run it here. And we will see how it performs again. Total transparency. I will let it run to see how it goes. So there you go. So it is actually does the Google search. Okay, that is cool. Yes, I think it found out my website. There you go. Very nice. Can it identify that it's a blog post? Let's see. That should be the fun part. There you go. So it says the title of the first blog post is how to create lip sync video with AI. Amazing, amazing stuff. So I think it was really, really well worth uh, just to turn on my system again and do this video. So really impressed by it. Uh, wait for the next video where I will be checking it out with Olama. And can I request you that if you like the content, can you please subscribe to the channel? And if you are already are, please don't just ignore it, share it among your network uh, on social media or wherever you like, because that's the only marketing I do. And if you are really, really happy with it, just if no compulsion, but buy me a coffee, that will be amazing. Thank you for all the support.